It was a jam, though. I loved it. I saw a version of it with rough animation, and I was like, this is incredible. I want to give you what you want. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 20 deleted Disney songs. With a spoon, with a bowl, with the music in your soul. For this list, we'll be looking at the toe-tapping musical numbers that weren't featured in their respective films, but still found a way to grace our ears. We'll also be including songs that don't appear in the movies themselves, but play over their credit sequences, as well as tunes that were cut but remained in their flick and instrumental form. Since these can get pretty plot-heavy, expect spoilers ahead. What's your favorite forgotten Disney track? Let us know in the comments! Number 20. How Much You Mean To Me, Court Me Slowly, The Aristocats Edgar from the Aristocats was a slimy, opportunistic weasel, but did you know that he almost had a partner in crime and a duet? This deleted character was Elvira, the maid, and she and Edgar were both to inherit their boss's estate and fortune. Edgar, however, wanted it all, so he attempted to seduce Elvira through a funny, conniving song to snatch her half of the goods. If you knew the wealth, the merry, merry wealth of joys that wait. On this very day, this very, very day, you set the date. Elvira, however, had her own very intimate idea of how Edgar should court her. Unfortunately, this zany duet wasn't meant to be. Outside of a few album appearances, both the song and Elvira were scrapped, and Edgar operated as a solo act. Buy me bonbons, take me dinner dancing, hide me Number 19. Why Me? Aladdin Jafar had a lot of songs cut from Aladdin before finally settling for a devious reprise of Prince Ali. Ali turns out to be merely a letter. <laughs> Just come, need I go on, take it from me. <laughs> the one that really caught our ear was Why Me? Jafar has finally snatched the genie's lamp and starts lamenting how unfair his position in life has been until now. Jonathan Freeman's overly dramatic singing gives this not-so-convincing sob story an extra dose of hilarity. I am power! I am clout personified! I've a genie in sheer malice on my side! It's a combination which works me up to fever pitch! It also adds a more grandiose feeling to Jafar emerging victorious and exposing Aladdin. It is a shame to lose such a fun villain song, but at least the Legacy soundtrack and the Aladdin Jr. musical have both kept it strong and alive. Who's the master of the lamp? Who's the one who take a page as in who's... Take it on home, Jafar! Who? Why me? Number 18. Silence is Golden, The Little Mermaid. Poor Unfortunate Souls is undeniably one of the best Disney villain songs of all time. But on the whole, I've been a saint to those poor unfortunate souls. However, it wasn't the original song planned for Ursula. Initially, the songwriters wrote a different, menacing waltz for the sea witch, titled Silence is Golden, where she tries to convince Ariel how much better things will be once she trades her voice. Silence is golden, my dear. Up above they hate chatter, so what does it matter if you become mute? Nobody likes a loud mouth. However, the song wasn't what the staff were looking for, so they canned it and replaced it with Poor Unfortunate Souls. Thankfully, Ursula's spell in the lyrics ended up being recycled and used in the final product. Other than that, pretty much all we seem to have of this forgotten gem is a piano demo. Silence is golden! <laughs> Number 17. The Madness of King Scar, The Lion King we still get goosebumps from Scar's dominating performance of Be Prepared. Yes, my teeth and ambitions are bad. Be prepared. But did you know it almost got two reprises? One of them was slated to take place following Simba's exile, as Scar welcomes the hyenas into the Pride Lands. So prepare for a glorious future! Another more notable one was titled The Madness of King Scar. It featured Scar flirting with an adult Nala trying to make her his queen, reportedly followed by a retooled version of the other reprise. Ultimately, these two were cut. 
One had inappropriate timing, and the other was inappropriate, period. While Be Prepared would remain its own entity, an original take on the madness of King Scar would be used in the Broadway musical, further highlighting the disgraced king's depravity. She's got those assets feminine. Now the king control the I hyenas. I have to make her mind. Destroying the pride lands. Nobility in every king. Look, if we stop now, don't you she see? She has to be my queen. This Number 16, I Can't Believe My Heart, Hercules. I Won't Say I'm In Love is a phenomenal, upbeat song where Meg tries with all her might to deny that she has feelings for Hercules. You swoon, you sigh, why deny it? Uh oh. It's still cliche, I won't say I'm in love. But before this gem graced our ears, there was another romance song in mind for Meg. This one was a slower ballad where instead of blatantly denying her feelings, Meg reflects on them, surprised that she has them, before slowly accepting them. Believe in me, and now I can't believe my heart has overcome my senses. It was beautiful, and Susan Egan once again gave it her all. However, the team agreed it didn't really feel like a Meg song. So it was scrapped and replaced with I Won't Say I'm In Love, which let's be honest, feels more like Megara's style. Number 15, Through the Eyes of Love, Mary Poppins. A Spoonful of Sugar is a catchy tune that anyone who's watched Mary Poppins can recognize within seconds. Just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down in a most delightful way. But did you know there was another song in consideration before it? Initially, the Sherman Brothers had written a ballad titled Through the Eyes of Love, sometimes also called The Eyes of Love. Through the eyes of love. It was a slow, touching piece about recognizing beauty from another point of view. A beautiful sentiment, but it didn't quite feel like a Mary Poppins tune, so it was dropped and replaced with the now iconic snappy song. Thankfully, the ballad's demo, as well as a completed recording, can be heard on the 2014 Legacy Collection album. Through the eyes of love. Number 14, get this right, Frozen 2. The phenomenon that was Let It Go was undoubtedly a tough act to follow. Frozen 2, however, was up to the challenge with showstoppers like Show Yourself and Into the Unknown. I am afraid of what I'm risking if I follow you into the unknown. Other returning characters, like Kristoff, also got their own songs. His big moment comes in the form of Lost in the Woods. I'm the one who sees you home, but now I'm lost in the woods. But originally, he was meant to have a stellar pop rock love song featuring Anna. Get This Right would have essentially been his clumsy attempt at executing a marriage proposal. And it's adorable. I want to thrill you in the way you deserve. I want to blow your mind, darling. I'm just having trouble getting up the nerve. Filled with expressions of Kristoff's charming self-doubt and Jonathan Groff's stellar high notes, the precious tune whimsically represents how this quirky couple complement each other. And the way it turns into a full-blown duet once Anna proposes? We can't get enough. I'm gonna be the man you want. Guess what you already are. I want to make your life so good. You're doing Number 13, Never Smile at a Crocodile, Peter Pan. The one thing Captain Hook truly fears is the hungry crocodile looking to turn him into his next meal. Once upon a time, the ravenous creature almost had its own song, Never Smile at a Crocodile. Appropriately set to the rhythm of a ticking clock, this eerily jolly tune warns its listeners to be wary of crocodiles. Solid advice given Hook's own experiences. Don't be taken in by his welcome. He's imagining how well you'd fit within his skin. It sounds so cheerful and upbeat, but given the context, it's downright menacing. While the song itself was cut from the film, the instrumental track is still used whenever the fearsome animal is lurking about. The tune's catchiness also ensured that it could pop up anywhere outside of Peter Pan. 
Never smile at a crocodile. No, you can't get friendly with a crocodile. Number twelve. Music in your soup. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Following the hilarious washing scene in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, there was almost a song with the dwarfs sitting down for dinner. They'd all start rhythmically slurping their soup while dishing out a jolly song. You can cheer things up with the zup 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 of the music in your soup. With a gulp, with a grin, <laughs> get a wiggle on your chin. It would then be followed by Snow White giving a lesson on table etiquette and more hilarious shenanigans with Dopey. The cheerful tune managed to get a pencil test and was reportedly almost considered for a sequel short. But sadly, music in your soup ultimately didn't make it past the cutting room floor. Thankfully, it survives through TV and album appearances and even theme park ride cues. Spoon in the hand, bending the wrist, into the bowl and out with a twist. Spoon, Spoon in the hand, hand bending, bending the wrist. The into the bowl and out with a twist. Number 11. She Never Felt Alone. The Aristocats. On their way back to Paris, Duchess explains why getting home to Madame Bonfamille is so important. She softly recites a somber poem about how much she and her kittens mean to their mistress. We're the greatest treasure she could own. Because with us, she never felt alone. Believe it or not, this poem was originally planned to be a full-length song, simply titled She Never Felt Alone. Its steady tempo emphasizes that even in Madame's old age, she always had a smile on her face as long as her beloved cats were nearby. To her, they're her only real family. To leave her alone in that big empty mansion would be tragic. Sadly, the tune didn't make the final cut, but they kept the first part in the script. They're the greatest treasure she could own. Because with us, she never felt alone. Number 10. I'm Odd, Alice in Wonderland. When the Jabberwocky was cut from the 1951 adaptation of Lewis Carroll's famous story, the first stanza of his poem, Twas Brillig, was used for the Cheshire Cat's introduction. A Twas Brillig and the slithy toves a did the gyre and the gimbel in the way. However, it turns out that the recycled verse had replaced another song originally set for the cat. My head begins to jingle most every time I nod, cause obviously, quite obviously, I'm odd. The appropriately titled I'm Odd featured the strange feline reveling in his peculiar ways and weird tendencies. I own a feather pillow, but I slumber on the sod, cause obviously, quite obviously, I'm odd. Years later, the song was rediscovered and recorded as a special feature for the special un-anniversary DVD, with a bouncy, bizarre rhythm and singing provided by Disney voice acting veteran Jim Cummings, giving us an odd taste of what almost was. Cause obviously, Quite obviously, I'm weird. Number 9. Life's Too Short, Frozen. I came all this way today to give us a fresh start. Before the reprise of For the First Time in Forever, the original song planned for Anna and Elsa's reunion was more upbeat and dramatic. Life's too short to miss out on a sister like you. In Life's Too Short, the two want to be together again. But Anna feels the only way that can happen is if Elsa puts the gloves back on and conceals her powers once more. So that's when your plan to force me back in a cage. Whoa, whoa, don't get upset. Let's get back on the same page. This leads to a confrontation that's later resolved in a melancholy reprise. I guess I'm just not the sort. Now all I know is life's too short. While it could have added some additional drama, both the track and reprise were cut from the final product, but they were still good enough to be featured on the deluxe soundtrack, and the melody would later be reused for Frozen Fever. You've never had a real birthday before, except of course the one just spent outside my locked door. <gasps> Number 8. Dancing on a Cloud, Cinderella. Dancing on a cloud, I'm dancing on a cloud. You know how love can sometimes make you feel like you're walking on air? Well, that's the feeling this lovely duet was meant to convey. The moon and the stars appear bringing romance for two. 
sung by the titular princess and her prince charming, Dancing on a Cloud was originally supposed to appear during their first meeting, where the pair become so swept up in romance that they imagine themselves to be dancing in the sky. I just can't believe that I found you. I just can't believe that it's true. While the sequence was storyboarded, it ended up being scrapped and replaced with the more grounded So This Is Love. So this is Number 7. To Be King, The Lion King To be king is a huge obligation. It's not just a license for fun. This forgotten royal African beat was to feature Mufasa, alongside Zazu and a few loyal subjects, singing to young Simba about the perks and responsibilities of being the king. To be king is a daunting position. But who gives a hoot when you're hot? Unfortunately, the number didn't make it past the animation phase, as it didn't quite suit James Earl Jones' singing voice. Not only that, but a tune like this doesn't seem very fitting for a serious character like the late king. Unlike Timon and Pumbaa's Warthog Rhapsody, which suits its characters well. Your guide must be this rhapsody. I get up when I like, he's got it all worked out. This deleted song sounds a little out of place. Still, it's pretty fun to hear Darth Vader sing a jaunty tune. My Number 6. Keep Em Guessing, Mulan Mushu knows how to put on a show, and that show almost involved a musical performance. You're heading for disaster, but I'm your one best chance. Originally, he was to have his own smooth, jazzy musical number for when he first meets Mulan, assuring her that he's here to help her through her masquerade and that he's her only chance. You're an odd one, mademoiselle, and your story doesn't gel. But if they don't ask, don't tell, keep on guessing. Although the creators loved the song, the number was scrapped when they realized Eddie Murphy's voice acting and energy were enough to make the character stand out without a big musical number. Did I hear someone ask for America? Let me hear you say, Ow! <laughs> While the song tragically didn't make the film's final cut, it would later be resurrected in the stage adaptation Mulan Jr. Number 5. Snuff Out the Light, The Emperor's New Groove But the moon grows old just like us all, and her beautiful years are done. So now she prays through endless days to take her revenge on the sun. In this film's original draft, Kingdom of the Sun, Yzma was a villainous sorceress out to destroy the sun and preserve her aging beauty as we learn through her sinister musical number brought to life by the late Eartha Kitt. Stop out the light, claim your right to a world of darkness. The song begins as a slow lounge piece, with Yzma lamenting her fallen youth, but then quickly evolves into an upbeat, funky, Latin-based dance number, as she and a band of mummies plot to plunge the world into darkness. Sadly, when the movie's plot was overhauled, the song was scrapped, but thankfully it can still be heard on the official soundtrack, and Yzma would later get her own song in the sequel. Number 4. Someday, The Hunchback of Notre Dame After unwillingly taking sanctuary inside Notre Dame, Esmeralda sings a quiet, breathtaking prayer to God asking to watch over society's outcasts. God help the outcasts, hungry from birth. Show them the mercy they don't find on earth. Originally, however, she sang a much bigger prayer, one that wished for a peaceful, more mature world of acceptance. Someday. When we are wiser, when the world's older, when we have learned. 
While it was passed over for a gentler scene, Someday was later adapted for the stage performances of the film, where it is sung prior to Esmeralda's execution, adding an extra layer of depth as her dying wish is for a world that learns to love. The song can still, however, be heard in the film's closing credits. When we are Number 3. If I Never Knew You, Pocahontas. If I never knew you, if I never felt this love. The night before John Smith is to be executed, Pocahontas pays him one last visit, and the two share a heartfelt exchange. Originally, this scene was to be a somber duet between the two lovers about how empty they would have been if they'd never met each other, and how while the fighting between their respective people wasn't ideal, it did bring them together and create something beautiful. Unfortunately, the ballad ended up slowing down the movie's pace for test audiences, so it was ultimately cut. I'd rather die tomorrow and live a hundred years without knowing you. However, it would later be fully animated for the film's 10th anniversary re-release. Lost forever if I never knew Number 2. Human Again, Beauty and the Beast I'll be cooking again be good looking again with a mademoiselle on each arm. It seems like Belle and the Beast are finally hitting it off, and the servants are eager to be human again. When we're human, human again, again, only human, human again. again. When the world once more starts making sense, <laughs> I'll unwind for a change. Really? That'd be strange. Can I help it if I'm too, too tense? While they clean up the castle, they all sing an upbeat song, dreaming about how wonderful life will be when the spell is broken. I can feel I can tell someone might break the spell and we're even treated to a nice little moment of our star-crossed lovers bonding. Twelve? Two. Two. I knew that. While the writers wanted to keep this number intact, it didn't quite fit in with the story at first, and was pulled from the final product. However, it survived through the Broadway adaptation, and was eventually fully animated and brought to life for the IMAX and Platinum Edition DVD releases. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Proud of your boy, Aladdin We have a very important question. How could the folks making Aladdin possibly decide to let this beautiful ballad go? Proud of your boy. I'll make you proud of your boy. Believe me, bad as I've been, Ma, you're in for a pleasant surprise. Originally, the titular character's mother was slated to appear in the film, and this emotional piece was his apology to her for all his mistakes, as well as his promise to do her proud. You'll see, Ma, now comes the better part. Someone's gonna make good cross his stupid heart. Make good and fine. Late lyricist Howard Ashman cared deeply for this song, and knowing the purpose it was meant to serve, it's not hard to see why. But the number and Aladdin's mother were both declared superfluous and cut out. Miraculously, the track was revived for the Broadway adaptation, making us all proud of Ashman's legacy. I'll do my best, what else can I do? Since I wasn't born perfect like Dad or you, Mom, I will try to, try hard to make you. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.